This is Debbie Dashinger, and um, I'm joined with my expert guest today, Claudia. And what I do out in the world is media visibility. So for those of you who are seeking right now a way to get your creativity out there, and many people are, by the way, it's actually a something I'm hearing, I'm getting more calls than ever before, which is awesome. People who want to take their book to bestseller and I've got the lowest ever COVID prices, but you have to get in during lockdown, if you will. Um, so just DM me uh, or write to me, bestseller at debbiedashinger.com. You see my correct name spelling there, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com, bestseller at debbiedashinger.com. And I can discuss because you'd have to get on the schedule definitely within the next few weeks for those very special prices for guaranteed international bestseller. Also, I've got a new membership platform for authors. So many people are like, I want to step into my greatness. I want something to show for this time in history that it meant something. And they want to finally write their darn book. A lot of us feel that calling, like, what haven't I done? That I always said I wanted to do and I keep pushing off and limiting myself. If it's your time to write a book, if you want private coaching, um, a lot of people are coming on for that. But if you would like to do group platform private membership coaching, go to debbie-dashinger.com slash visible visionaries. That's twice a month monthly with me, the group. And I take you from the start, the inception of your idea to the completion of your book. So you can be published author this year. And finally, for folks who love dogs or are in the pet industry in any way, shape, or form, please know that there is an anthology called The Ultimate, M-U-T-T -T, as in Mutt, <laughs> The Ultimate Book for Dog Lovers. And we are 70% full in our chapters. If you would like to write a chapter, you must register. Um, just don't reach out and go, ah, oh, that sounds great. I love you for that, but it, you, I need you to either register or ask me a really direct question after you see the website, because it's an unbelievable package. It's perfectly wholesale, and it's at debbied.net, D-E-B-B-I-D.net slash anthology. And the only person, I was thinking about this the other day, I do not have a dog groomer. I have a dog trainer. I have a dog service person. I have dog lovers. Um, I have really canine, I have some really interesting, awesome people, and I would think the more varied, the better for the dog anthology. And um, yeah, I don't have a dog groomer. I think that would actually be very cool. So any perspective uh, fascinates me, and I hold your hand through the entire process. You could be a published author this year just by writing a chapter, and I take that to a guaranteed international bestseller as well. So to introduce my guests, guess what I need? Sad to say, but I must put these on for at least a period of time and then invite in my beautiful guest, Claudia. Claudia, welcome to the show. Hello, I'm super excited to talk to you, Debbie. Thank you, I am too. And so here's the dealio. I've got one of these in every room in my house. I've got extra in my closet just in case. I've got some in my travel because honestly, if I go anywhere without these, I'm completely incapacitated. So how normal is that? You mean getting glasses? I don't know your whole story, but I'm assuming that you got glasses sometime. No, not in your just getting of glasses. 15? What I mean is having a pair everywhere because God forbid you don't have them. And then like, really? You know, I couldn't read things on screen. I couldn't read labels, like my iPhone. It's ridiculous. It is very common for sure. And it takes away your freedom. Like you said, you know, you feel like in cap, what did you say? Incapitated? No, incapacitated. I can't in remember the word used. That's my second language. That's why I'm like messing up. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's very, it takes away your freedom. It's like a handicap, right? Having, having your vision not being perfect is a handicap um, that I also experienced before I got rid of my glasses. Well, yeah, I, and if people heard nothing else, hear that. She threw away her glasses. That's why we're doing this. You know, when I, um, I was growing up and even well into my adulthood, Claudia, well, well, well into my adulthood, especially if I had a boyfriend who wore glasses, 
I had perfect eyesight for a really long time. And I never understood people who wore glasses. And I would say to them or friends, like, what is it like? Because I couldn't understand it. And they'd say, oh, so when I wake up in the morning, I can't just wake up and see an alarm clock. I have to do this and squint or turn on lights or, you know, I'm lost without some kind of a contact or a glass. So I would do that just to see what is that like? I'm sorry I ever did that. Um, but now I know what it's like. And so it hasn't gotten better over the years. It just keeps getting worse. And I'm gonna add to the mix here and really like the big bomb is during our lockdown and quarantine, my eyes has gotten worse. I cannot even use my contacts successfully. So speak to that. So I'm assuming at this point with a lockdown that you're spending more time on screens. Is that, is that true or is, is it, do you have more stress or there's a lot of factors that I want to say for the listeners, there's a lot of factors that influence our vision. And at the fundamental level, it's stress, right? Stress being in that fight or flight mode, um, even if you don't have to be. And that's a, in kind of a mental strain, nervous system, like panic mode, where your vision is worse for everybody. Vision varies for everybody. Mm -hmm. And when you use a lot of screens, like we do now in the lockdown, and if you don't know what the good habits are to, to use the screens properly, your vision will definitely get worse. And gla wearing glasses will make your vision worse. Like, like your, what you experience exactly is what happens very, very, to basically everybody that starts wearing them. Oh, what good news. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean- I have some I, tips, no worries. <laughs> if I didn't think it was bad enough, um, then yeah. So thankfully, that's exactly why you're here. And um, I'm just posting because I know we've got people with us, which is awesome in case they have some questions they want to ask of you. They are welcome to jump on and, and ask those. So I, I'm all yours. I mean, when you say you threw away your glasses, will you just say up front, because um, I like to be very transparent with people um, especially if we're going to build hope or anything, like how long did it take you? Did you just one day go, that's it, I'm done, boom? Or was it a process? And if it was a process, how long till you could literally go, you were great for the time being, but bye bye. <laughs> it's definitely a process. I didn't just throw my glasses away. I got glasses at age three. So I had a, my eye was going in, you know, turning in my right eye. And I wore them all through childhood. And I discovered the kind of natural vision improvement method in my early 20s. And I was able, with all the techniques, to get rid of my glasses and not wear them. And so I was kind of in that, what you talked about earlier, like, oh, my vision is great now. And then in my 30s, I was in a really horrible marriage. <laughs> it ended in divorce, very stressful time. And I was back in glasses. And at, at some point when I was just a little bit over 40, I had that epiphany because I really took my glasses off one day and everything was super blurry, like so much worse than ever before. And I'm like, this doesn't feel right. Like this doesn't feel right. And I remember that I had this book. I literally bought, bought this book in like the early 80s or something, right? And I found, I searched everything, found that book use those methods again and I saw a change and then I actually ended up getting a coach, a, a vision teacher, because it's very difficult to do this on your own, right? Because it's, it's about strain and having tension and you're usually unaware of those things. Like, you know, if we were to be aware of that, it would be easy, right? So I ended up getting a coach and I think about, and then I did my teacher training. So in terms of years to be completely glasses free, maybe it was like a year or two. It didn't take that long for me. Okay. And when you say a year or two, then how did you manage in the interim? If you're going to say goodbye to your glasses and release them, but you're not fully seeing as well as you do right now, how did you manage getting by every day? So that's a, that's a great question. So in my case, the glasses, I use, use them mostly for driving, but I was okay with near point, like reading was okay. And so this really depends on, for your listeners, where they start from, right? If you are super nearsighted or have progressive glasses and you have no clarity at any point, you start with the distance that's the best. 
that's usually like for you in your case, for instance, you've been starting to wear readers, you know, your distance vision will be easier to fix. And what I also encourage everybody to do, notice how your vision varies, like how you talked about it got worse, but it, when is it best? When is it worse? Is it the time of the day? Is it your stress level? Is it the task that you're doing? You know, if you do something you absolutely hate doing, for me, that's bookkeeping or looking at numbers. I'm, you know, yesterday, for instance, I led my first webinar in my new launch and I was, I always have that stage fright, right? And I had a lot of, I had 500 people show up and that moment before I went on, everything was blurry. And then the second I started, it's like, whew, calm, everything is clear. So I'm like, oh, you know, I could be worried, but I know that was just the adrenaline and the stress kind of, you know, making my vision worse. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. And then doing everything you can do without glasses. So if you have a distance where you're okay, maybe have a little bit blur, but you know, you're okay. You're not, you're not squinting. So if you're squinting or straining, that's not helpful, right? Yeah. So for instance, if for, for instance, driving as an example, in California where we live in most states in the United States, you legally need 20, 40 vision for driving. Like, you know, that's not perfect vision in one eye, right? So, so I see some people that have 20, 10 vision with their glasses. So you depends on how you feel, right? If you like driving, but legally that's all you need, right? So you don't need perfect vision that they don't even require that. So do as much as you can without glasses and then use the weakest glasses that you can get away with for like say reading, whatever, wherever you have challenges, right? Yeah. Interesting, okay. And um, we're gonna get kickstarted into solutions here. I wanna say one thing because I've spoken to Claudia previously and one of the tips that Claudia gave me, I have found to be ridiculously true in my life. And I've surprised myself because now I'm aware of it because of what you shared, Claudia. So one of the things Claudia said was, we have a tendency with glass, when we wear glasses, that we end up going on to the next thing in our day and we're still wearing them. So these are only readers. I have good distance. And actually, to answer your earlier question, where I see the biggest problem is in darkness versus light. When I have a lot of light, I see much better, darkness much worse. And what I found myself doing since Claudia brought it up is becoming really lazy. So if I'm doing work here, instead of being done here and taking off the glasses and then let's say I go into the next room and I handle something, I have no need for glasses. Instead, I was walking around like this and doing all of this or like this and doing all these tasks, not realizing I was actually affecting my eyesight for the worse by not removing the glasses. So I really want to share this because there may be a lot of people out there going, Oh my God, I do the same thing. I'm lazy like that too. And I didn't realize. Yeah. So what you are doing is actually um, fostering creation of astigmatism. So when you have your glasses, like on the bottom of your nose, you know, like looking above them, anytime you move your basically natural vision, one tip I can give your listeners right now, natural vision is that we move our attention, right? So think of moving my attention over there you move your head, you don't want to just move your eyes around. And that's what happens when you have the readers at the bottom and you're kind of looking above them. You're, instead of looking up, you know, you're kind of just moving your eyes. And if you do that habitually in the same direction all the time, you will develop an astigmatism in that angle. So this is like the postural habits that come with wearing glasses, especially progressives that you, you don't have those, but the ones that give you diff, different diopters for different they assume that you look straight ahead, you look in the distance, you look down, you're reading. In reality, you might be on the computer, which is two feet away, not 20 feet away. And then you do that, yes. you know, chin up kind of thing. And that creates an astigmatism. So that's why the rule is to, again, what you just did, like don't wear them when you don't need them. And then use the weakest strength you can because diopters can only correct you for a single distance. So your readers, are meant to correct you for like 16 inches, right? To look or read a book or something. Now you look at something a little further away, that's, you don't need that, right? You, you might need, I don't know what you have in your readers. Let's say it's a plus two. This is true. Maybe you need yes. a plus, yeah. Maybe you need a plus one for something that's, you know, a little further away. But again, I always say befriend the blur in a way that not everything should be super blurry, but 
if you find that right, that edge where things could be clear when you take a few deep breaths, you blink, blinking is super important for good vision to keep your eyes lubricated, belly breathing is creating that relaxation response. And then just check in and be like, do I really need my glasses? Like the ideal sweet spot is when you don't wear glasses or weaker glasses and you find yourself with clear vision when you relax, but the second you, you hold your breath or you get stressed or whatever, there's a blur. And that's what I mean, befriend the blur. Like the blur is like, hey, what's going on, Claudia or Debbie? Like what's going on with you right now? Like I noticed yesterday before my webinar, right? I was like in so panic mode that, you know, that something doesn't work, like technology, you know, and you're like, oh, you know. <laughs> and the second everything started, I was like, everything was clear, so. Mm. All right, so what we just learned, and I'm just taking notes here, is be careful of stress, it weakens the eyes, befriend the blur, and do not wear your glasses all the time. Take them off when not needed. Okay, this is amazing, um, and I would love more. I would like to be, here, let me throw down the gauntlet. I would actually like to be one of your success stories, one of your testimonies. And I'm going to be really honest, even as a metaphysician, I don't know if I believe it. So I'm a, I'm a skeptic. Um, I believe you did it. I don't know if I can do it. So if you really believe it's possible for me and anybody watching or listening right now, because this is video and audio, if it's true, can you arm us? with the tool belt so that this can be so that if we literally follow your recipe, Claudia, we can all become your testimonies and say this, say this woman, Claudia, saved my eyes. And by the way, give us your last name and your website because people will be interested. So my last name is Mühlenweg, which is German and it means lane to the mill. And my website is myholisticvision.com, myholisticvision.com. I also have a free download there called 10 Habits for Healthy, Happy Eyes that give you 10 really great strategies um, to improve your eyesight. And you're not believing it. So there's lots of studies out there. I can, I'm happy to supply those to you. But apart from that, vision, like if you notice yourself that your vision varies, which can happen every 10 seconds, for even if you have perfect vision, you know, our eyes are not like, they're part of the system, the brain. Um, we do see in the brain and the visual cortex is where we actually perceive the eyeballs are like the, you know, the portal basically where the light comes in. So anything we perceive is happens in the brain and the brain, we know that from neuroplasticity, the brain can be trained and the brain is also the driver of everything, your muscle tension, your breathing, your muscle control, everything is, it's like, this is the head, right? The control unit basically. So you can, you can be in stress mode all day long, or you can start noticing patterns. So the thing is, the people that are successful are, first of all, committed. They do believe that they can create change. I have a good friend who actually died two days ago. I'm super sad. At 101, perfect eyesight all his life. The most positive mindset that you can imagine. So the elders that are healthy and they, they don't believe everything goes downhill when you're over 45, right? It's that, that mindset of imagining clarity and you actually see better versus like, I'm blind without my glasses. You know, like you literally say these things, like thoughts change our physical being. You know, if you ever read Joe Dispenza or any of those kind of books, right? So your thoughts affect your, your being. It starts, it starts in the mind, really. Um, I have so many more things, but I don't want to go on and on and maybe you have some questions in between. So, yes. And I'm, I'm copiously taking notes. So thoughts can change our physical being. It starts in the mind. So yeah, let's do. Um, but I also want to say, I know tons of people who don't believe in things, but do them. I mean, there's the metaphysical part, but I know people who do things and actually if they do them diligently, will still succeed, just they're blown away, right? They're maybe more surprised than those who started out as great believers. I also know people who believe and don't always create. So maybe it's about what's really on the inside that will or will not get in the way. I'll tell you, even though I'm a skeptic, I'm willing. I'm really willing, because man, am I over glasses and contacts, big time. I have pretty eyes, I have a pretty face, I'm tired of having to have stuff here, and if I'm without them, and a 
God forbid, in a grocery store. I don't even know what prices are. It's horrible. I don't even know what I'm looking at in a can so, <laughs> or a package. So yes, I want you to take the reins here and give us, I don't care if it's three steps or 10 steps or whatever it is that we can literally, one day at a time, start to incorporate these and use these, the Claudia method. Okay, happy to do that. One thing I want to say about not believing is there's a difference if you train your abs and you just do mechanical crunches, you will still see changes. Because our eyesight is so intricately connected to our emotions, our feelings, how we see the world, how we see others, you know, the, like you talked about the inside, right? How our insides. So it's kind of like eyesight is not just muscle training. There is eye exercises, and I'm happy to, to share some with you. However, it's really more about, I like the word relax exercises more, connecting with what you see, what you don't want to see, right? You're, so good vision, let me start with some tips here. So the, the foundations of good vision are basically, it's rest, light, and movement. And rest means that sometimes literally just, you know, you don't stand or run all day, you know, you rest in between. It could be simply closing your eyes, taking a few deep breaths. So what I like to do is called palming. You use the, your, the heels of your hands and you place them on the bony part of your eye socket. So you're not touching your eyes, right? You cup your hands a little bit and you cover your closed eyes. You cover them with your hands like so. And then you, you rest your elbows on something ideally so you can completely relax. And then you take a few deep breaths. Hmm. And you think of something that really makes you happy, that relaxes you. You can use a meditation mantra. Any, like it doesn't matter what you do. You don't want to listen to the news while you do this. You, it's really about dropping in and noticing how you're feeling and getting into that sensation of letting your eyes completely relax. Relax your jaw. Relax your shoulders, <sighs> maybe sigh it out. Oh, that stress doesn't matter right now. Nothing to do, nothing to see. <sighs> Stay there for a few more deep breaths. And it's always nice, like sometimes I like to sigh it out on the exhale. And also thinking on the inhale, every time you inhale, there's fresh energy coming up all the way from the ground through your legs, all the way up to your, the top of your head, your eyes, that fresh oxygen. And then with every exhale, you release everything that doesn't serve you, that's in your way. Yeah. And to, anyone who doesn't serve me. Yeah, you just want to release all that. And let your eyes, so it's, you're letting your eyes relax, by, but it's really about letting your mind relax. And then the body follows. I see why you have to rest your elbows. They get a little tight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it should be when you're really relaxed, the inner visual field would be really black. Mm -hmm. And when you have like gray patches or kind of that snow old TV kind of, you know, whatever stuff going on, um, that's a sign of of stress, kind of in your neurons firing in the brain because you can't really see anything. So if it's not black, it's, it's the nervous system like in overdrive. Mm -hmm. And you can do this, you know, you can do this for 10 deep breaths. I, I like to do it a little longer. I do it in my morning meditation. When I meditate, I have my elbows kind of on the support and I just do it for the whole time of my meditation. Mm -hmm. So the way to come out is to, to move your hands away, keep your eyes closed, mm -hmm. because then you will notice the light. Even just taking the hands away, it's suddenly a lot brighter. And then you take your time, like don't rush this. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready to look again, you just do five quick butterfly blinks, like blink, 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 blink your eyes. And then five gentle squeezes. You just gently squeeze your eyes a little together. Okay. So just do a little squeeze, 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 squeeze. Yeah. And then you, do they feel more lubricated and rested or how do you feel? Good. Uh, definitely it took me down a few notches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I really actually, nice. I had a lot of, 
a lot of coffee this morning, so. Well, this oh. is good, right? It, it was like super short, right? I mean, I always say I used to smoke back in the day, you know, in Germany, everybody smoked. And as a smoker, you always, always find time, you mm -hmm. know, those three, four minutes to smoke a cigarette. And you might as well take those, you know, two, three minutes to just give your eyes a little break. Nice. So this is also good to, for a little bit of anatomy. So the rod cells are the cells in your retina that produce night vision and peripheral vision, like movement. Mm -hmm. And giving them that darkness replenish it, replenishes that, that visual purple, it's called, that rhodopsin. So it, this is really good for night vision to give your eyes that kind of complete darkness. And then for the other cells that give you clarity and color vision, the cone cells, I like to do sunning. So right now we're inside, right? It's hard to demonstrate, but sunning is basically, so imagine there's a big sun right in front of me and you just have your eyes closed and you turn your head side to side. So, you know, you have more light and now this eye is in the shadow. And then I like to inhale center and exhale to the side. So just for people who are listening and not seeing, so her eyes are closed. We are in the sun, all of us be in the sun doing this. And obviously this is a great time to be doing it. And she breathes in while facing forward and then very gently and almost in a meditative state, turns to the right, still with the eyes closed, then gently brings the face forward and breathes in and turns to the left, exhaling. And so it's basically sort of like a, um, you know, what waters your lawn, ch -ch -ch -ch, a sprinkler. <laughs> so you're to the middle, right, middle, left. But it's very trance-like with your eyes closed. So the eyes, so uh, Claudia, is it that the lids are absorbing the sunlight? Right, you get, you get a lot of sunlight through the eyelids. Um, and this is the beginner level. I end up doing it where you open the eyes on the side, but a lot of people, so a lot of people that have vision problems are very light sensitive and light sensitivity is actually connect. Like you have to reduce your light sensitivity to reduce your, what's called the refractive error. In your case, you're farsighted or nearsighted or have astigmatism and sunning is just a really gentle way. And it stimulates those cone cells, right? It's like a vitamin kind of like shot for those cone cells. Sunlight is really beneficial for the eyes. I actually stopped wearing sunglasses 11 years ago. I always say there's exceptions for this, but the eyes actually need sunlight. It has the beautiful full spectrum. We get vitamin D from the sun. You know, of course, common sense, right? If you're like fair skinned like me, I'm not going to be in the sun for like, you know, a whole day without protection. But what I'm saying is it, in normal circumstances, if you don't have a specific eye disease, you don't have, um, you know, your pupils can, you know, when you have certain drugs and your pupils are dilated, you obviously need sunglasses. But I always say the pupils are built in sunglasses, right? When it's bright, they get very small. When it's dark, they open up. And I used to wear sunglasses religiously, even on overcast days here in Los Angeles. And I was so light sensitive at night, the headlights from cars were like, you know, I was really struggling with those lights. And then because my pupils would take so long to open and close because I wore sunglasses. All day. Like they never practiced. So, you know, they never practiced this opening and closing really. And well, so that's what the this... boundaries though, because I understand that there's also a place where it is too much sunlight if we are not to wear right. glasses. So, cause I want to protect people too. So they don't just suddenly start going out in the sun and looking up right. and I'm healing, you know, we don't want, something to go south in the other way. What are the boundaries around our, our eyes being in the natural sunlight? How much, how little, how do we work within that? So I, I always say extreme conditions, right? If you're like skiing, it's white, it's bright sunlight, any extreme conditions. Anytime you take certain drugs that, again, limit your pupil reaction. If you have cataracts, macular degeneration, any of those, you want to be careful. I usually wear a hat, like a lot of times just doing it. I know your listeners cannot see that, but if you have a baseball cap, a lot of times it's the angle of the sun more than anything. Um, but basically behind sunglasses, your pupils open up. So you actually get more light in because it's dark. It kind of tricks the brain. Um, so I use common sense, right? If you're in extreme conditions, if you're on the ocean, if you're at the beach, if you're in any super bright conditions, wear sunglasses, but if you're in the city, if you're like, 
you know, normal day, maybe wearing a cap or a hat and just notice the difference. My eyes have improved so much from just reducing my light sensitivity. That was one of the biggest challenges for me to, to have, to be so light sensitive. So that's what I would use as common sense. And I don't, you know, who, like literally who of us spends all day outside? I, you know, most of us. For somebody who's a post person or a gardener. Or right. Or there would be people. Yeah. Yeah. They would wear a walker. cap. I would always wear a cap. If you're a dog walker and you want to be part of the book too, that would be fun. <laughs> I keep thinking of all the people for the book. Um, so, okay. I just want to recap before we move forward, because these are really good. And before I recap, do you suggest we do these every day? Is this an everyday thing or twice a week or how often? So when you begin, like uh, for me, it's maintenance, right? Because I don't have, haven't worn glasses in 19 years. For me, it's maintenance. I do my palming and my sunning, usually during my morning meditation. And otherwise I'm using my eyes well all day long. But if you're beginning this journey, right? It's doing baby steps is important, but also tuning in and noticing what actually gives me more relaxation. Is sunning and palming great for me? So I recommend doing this every day for sure. I usually like to do it in the morning, some palming, maybe after lunch, you eat your lunch, you, eat, you do some sunning and then a little bit of palming, just little breaks in between. But everybody is different. Some people benefit way more from like a, you know, 20 minute palming session once a day and other people benefit more from like what you just did, you know, the really short ones, but maybe three or five sprinkling into the day ideally before you feel strain, before you get that blur, right? Ideally you do it preventatively, but definitely do it when you feel strain, when you feel stressed, take a, like, literally 10 deep breaths. So that's what I would do. Um, and then the sunlight, yeah, if, if you live anywhere with sunlight, then I, I usually, when I lived in Germany, as an example, and the sun didn't come out that much, the second that sun came out, I would run outside or go to the window and do some sunning because it was, might have been just two minutes before the sun went away again. Oh. So here in Southern California, we have the luxury all day, right? Yes. Interesting. Um, okay, so let's re... Oh, this is so, I'm trying to put your information. I have a lot more tips, though. So. Yep. I have I'm a lot more your things. information here, just so you know, I know you can't see because you're the guest, but I want people to have this. Um, and sadly, it is changing. Uh, I'm just trying to put your information very nicely. So people have your website and your name and all of that should they want to work with you and it's better than spending money on glasses. I don't know about you. But besides uh, seeing the doctor, the eye doctor, and all the tests. Eh, but, you know, look, this is the USA. If we were in Asia, for example, I know what the glasses cost. I, I've had Chinese friends who have come back with some of the coolest glasses on the planet. And they're like, ah, I paid 30 bucks. Like, what? And here, really nice glasses. I mean, you may say you were on the 200s. That's not my taste. For me, it starts at 400 and up. And it's ridiculous if you can have glasses everywhere. So I think the cost of working with Claudia <laughs> pays off. It's an ROI, if you will, uh, going forward. So Claudia, just to recap, you talked about first taking the palms, putting them gently over the eyes. We're not pressing. We are just very gently putting them over. We're taking deep breaths in and out. We can sigh them out if we want, but we keep them there in a meditative state calming state, releasing stress, and we can do it for 10 minutes. You do it sometimes for 20, but it, 10 minutes is beautiful. The other piece you said is that we can use the sun to heal. It's actually our friend. Be very careful if you're in extreme condition like skiing, beaches, you know, and it's pretty obvious. Anything outdoor, or if you work outdoors, you want to take care. In general, you wear a hat or a baseball cap to protect your eyes, but to sun them, you close them and you had a very gentle head turning. So from front where you breathe in to the right, out, front where you breathe in, left, out, and back and forth very gently. And then there are times where you open your eyes and allow the sun to actually come into the eyeball itself. Did I miss it? Yeah, that's, that's, so the sunning is like turning head side to side. If you know, it's a really great way to stretch your neck also. 
So tension in head, neck, and shoulders is another issue that needs to be resolved with massage, or I use little therapy massage balls. But yeah, any tension in your neck, your neck is kind of the bottleneck to the brain, right, where the oxygen flows. So you want to release any tension in the upper back. And turning your head side to side is just a nice, easy stretch, right, for that neck. But you can also do like head circles or move your head up and down, like, you know, with sunning. I like the side to side, but you can move your head in any way that feels really nice as a nice little stretch for your, you know, neck. And yeah, so you, but basically move your head around side to side is what I usually do. It's my favorite. But you can also do chin to chest and then kind of, you know, turn your head up and keep your eyes closed, especially if you're beginning this. And if it's the middle of the day and the sun is really bright, you want to have your eyes closed. Yeah. Okay. What is the next piece? So the next piece, this is actually one of the super most important things. When I first heard this, I, was, I, was, I didn't believe it. So the anatomy of the eye, you've probably all seen these diagrams of the eyes from the side where the light kind of gets bundled and then it falls onto the retina in that little spot, that little, like, you know. Anyway, the, the, so the retina has one spot where you have perfect, clear vision. That's the fovea inside the macula. That's, it's the size of a pinhead. It's a tiny, tiny spot where we have perfect, clear vision. And the further away you get from that spot, the blurrier it is. So on the outer periphery, everybody knows that, right? On the outer periphery, if you like side, basically you have your hands, you know, next to your ears on the side, you know, you don't really see much. You see some movement, but you can't really see any detail. And the further you come to the middle, the better it gets. But your actual area of clarity, if you're like, um, I think when you're on Facebook, you see the live, the L and the live, or look at any letter uh, or the F on Facebook. I don't know what you guys see in front of you right now, but look at a word and look at the first letter and notice how that letter is way sharper than even the letter, letter next to that. Mm. And the further away, the blurrier it is. So this is anatomy-based central vision it's very, very small area. And another way to test this, if you guys don't get it, let me show you another way. Yeah. Hold up two thumbs, okay. maybe two feet away or something like that, right? Like, you know, maybe a, a foot or something away from each other. And then look, turn your head, always turn your head to what you're looking at. Look at your left thumb. And now notice how you see that thumb a lot better than the other one, right? The right one is kind of in your periphery, but it's blurry. You don't see it clearly, correct? That is correct. You, yep. And then, you, and then you move your attention to the right one and you notice now you see the right one clearly and the left one is kind of in your periphery, but you can't see it clearly. Mm -hmm. And then you move your thumbs closer and closer together, right? Eventually they touch, but continue to practice this, looking at one, noticing you see that one better than the other, and eventually they will be touching. So they will be next to the, each other. And now, can you still follow me, Debbie? Oh, yes, I'm with you. I'm so Okay, so gross. now look at them close. <laughs> yeah, now look at the left one. You still see that better than the right one, right? When you look at one, you see that clearer than the other one. Yeah, it's with anything you focus on, that's what, where you're... Right, and then just do one thumb and look at the outer left side of that thumb and see how that is clearer than the right. So the point I'm making here is that if you try to stare or try to look at your smartphone and try to see the whole screen mm. clearly at once, that's anatomically impossible. And that's why I like small prints. Like my phone is set to the smallest standard setting. Woman. Because really? the smaller the text, the more you're moving, you, the more you have to move your eyes and your head. You know what I mean? The bigger the text, the more you can try to stare and see that whole word clear at once. That would be true for yeah. a book. That would be true for a Kindle. That would be true for an iPad. That would be true for your computer and how you set it up. Wow, I never thought exactly that. So, okay, I understand this premise. I had to take it away from my screen because I, I noticed the light from the, emitted from the screen was making a difference. So I took my thumbs off to the side, focus on the left, then I turn my head, not just my eyes, focus on the right, turn my head. So I do that and slowly these are coming in. And then at some point, I'm going to just speed this up. They come together. And then I can take away one thumb and just focus on one thumb on the outermost left portion. And then the outermost right portion. Yep, I totally get this. I mean, this is fact. I'm seeing it. 
And so you're saying then to translate this to the next step in the real world is instead of me setting everything, which is correct, everything to the biggest, the boldest. So there's ease in seeing where I'm trying to ingest, if you will, everything all at once. And you're saying it's anatomically impossible. May keep it small. Although I would think there has to be gradations. Somebody like me, if I go immediately to small, I, I, it's a wash. I won't see a thing, right? Yeah, definitely, Debbie. So the thing is, I, when, we, when I start with my students, I always say, put yourself in the optimal condition, right? So I'd rather have you not wear glasses or weaker glasses and have the text a little bigger and the light a little brighter so that you're starting with optimal conditions. Once you understand the principle of what, um, you know, what's originally called central fixation or central clarity, once you understand that, the two thumbs is just a way to get the idea, right? That's not an actual technique that you're practicing. That's really just to kind of, aha, I got this idea. And then you just basically, you don't have to put your text small initially, but you be aware of that premise that, you know, think of when you're reading, think of as if you're underlining the text with a marker mm -hmm. and your attention is on the tip of the marker. So, you know, as you're moving your attention, underlining the text, so that's maybe a way, you know, kids, when kids start reading, they always use a finger as a pointer and that finger really helps you to, to keep your attention on the spot that you're looking at. And then you're moving, you're, you're not like bam, 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 like staccato, you're smoothly moving along, right? Your, your, your brain is quick at getting, we don't have to read every letter, right? We, we can kind of, but be aware that you can only see a small portion very clearly at once. That's really the, the big thing that you, anywhere on your hike, look at a leaf on a tree. Notice how you see that leaf better than all the other leaves on the tree, right? So you can practice this. This is what I mean with good habits that I automatically employ all day long. I don't practice this anymore, if that makes sense. All I know is you're not using glasses, so you win. <laughs> you know a lot more than I do, and I'll, I'll follow your lead here. Okay, so that's beautiful. We have to remember to let, it's not just the eyes moving, let the eyes move, go to a lesser reader if you can. And um, I can do that. I can do all of this. This is all really doable. So cool, I'm excited. What is next, my dear? So, so I mentioned at the beginning, but I wanna e e e iterate, reiterate. <laughs> So blinking, so my friend Sal, who just passed away, he blinked every, every second and he had perfect vision. I saw his phone, nothing was enlarged till like, you know, he died. Like I saw him for his birthday the day after the new media summit on March 12th, right? I saw him for his birthday. So he blinks a lot and it only takes 10 seconds of not blinking for your tear film to thin. And the, the only supply, the, the only nutrients the cornea gets is from the tear film so that's why blinking frequently is super important. And most of us, when we look at screens, we forget. We, we stare at the screen, we forget to blink. So a way to practice this, to kind of teach your body and your brain to how good this feels, is to do 30 seconds of butterfly blinking. So it's like, you know, blink, 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 blink for 30 seconds and, you know, really quick. And you might find that, like, it's really difficult initially that you feel like, okay, my eyelids feel like they're made out of lead. So quick, 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 quick. You know, do it for 30 seconds, long time. We don't have to do it the whole 30 seconds right now. But my point is, you teach your body something by do doing it, right? You're repeating it. And then afterwards, you find that you want to blink more. It just feels good. Mm -hmm. Does this mean And that blinking prevents staring. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I'm curious if um, it's good to, then to use eye drops or no. You just recommend use your own, the water the tears, the saline from your own eyes? So eye drops, again, there's always exceptions, but I don't recommend them. And I worked with many students who had LASIK and the common side effect of LASIK is extreme dry eyes. But students that had prescription eye drops and we dry three times a day, very expensive drops. And then we, they did a lot of the blinking practice, the palming, you know, and maybe sometimes just closing your eyes. And all of them were able to completely re we like stop where doing these eye drops because the more eye drops you use, the less tears you produce, right? So that it's like your body, then you put this artificial thing in, right? So this is why it's really for anybody that wants to have success, it's a 
it's being aware of your habits, you know, and changing them. So that's a slow way of going back from bad habits to good habits and noticing when your eyes are dry, maybe I should take a few minutes to palm my eyes, right? Or I do the 30 seconds butterfly blinking. Yeah. Yeah. Especially being in Southern California where this is a desert. And I remember many years ago when I first started wearing contacts, it was a problem because I would put them in and these things got so dry on top of a dry eye. Um, and it's not like being back east in the humidity where I grew up, right? Totally different animal or some of the more beautiful tropical places in the world. So I was constantly putting eye drops in. Um, and I know they've come really far in technology, but uh, yeah, this is prevalent and it makes sense. Okay. So we can do this. This is really about butterflying your eyes, allowing your, got, your eyes to re-wet, re-moisturize. Um, it's feeding the eyes. What is the next piece? So um, before I come to the next piece, for dry eyes, also really important, omega-3s. You guys might have heard this. We all usually eat too much omega-6. So omega-3s are you know, in chia seeds, flax seeds, and walnuts. So omega-3s are really important too to support your eyes with, um, you know, that tear film. And then the next thing is, and you know, you might have heard this, but basically our eyes are not meant to be locked into one distance all day long. It's like sitting cross-legged for eight hours, you know, what you do when you stare at the screen without ever moving your attention into different distances. So looking up, I have my computer facing my backyard. I just need to move my eyes one inch up and I look into the distance. So keeping your eyes or your attention moving, right? Moving around, getting up, looking, looking into the distance. It's just not, right? It makes total sense, right? Also that peripheral vision. One thing for computers I recommend, never have your screen on in a dark room because we already have this kind of tunnel vision tendency, especially when you wear glasses. Um, but if you have a brightly lit room or the same brightness in the screen, you're aware of your periphery, right? You're aware of there's this room and there's space and it's good vision is both central clarity and that peripheral field. And one way to improve that is to do a little practice with, um, to get that att attention is to practice something where you use two fingers and you can use a third object. That's just kind of a diff nice way to call it a lens flexor or where you just kind of stretch your eyes. So um, you have one finger kind of close to your, to your face, one a little further away. And you can, let's just do it with two fingers for now. So one is pretty close, you know, maybe, you know, what is it like? It doesn't really matter the exact distance, but one is closer to your nose, one is further away. You're holding them in line with your nose. Now look at the finger in front, the closer one. Mm -hmm. How many fingers do you see in the back? Oh, two. I mean, good, good. Well, good. well done. <laughs> And now you look at the finger in the back and how many do you see in the front? One. Yeah, maybe move your fingers around a little bit. Maybe move that front finger a little bit closer or further away. Or the one, just move it around a little bit. Uh, well, yeah, it's weird. It's, it's sort of like one vibrating back and forth between two, if that even makes sense. So the reason we see, so this is, um, this is basically practicing a depth perception. And you can do it, let's say we have a third object, we pretend uh, there's a third object in the distance, or maybe you have something you can look at. I have a tree there. Absolutely. So when you, you know, so you do this, you look at the first finger, you notice there's two fingers of the second finger, and then two other of whatever other object in the distance, let's say there's a tree. Mm -hmm. Then you look at the middle finger, you notice there's two in the front, and then two trees in the distance. And then you look at the tree, you see four fingers. So the reason this happens, I just want to explain this, two eyes we have two eyes in different positions in the head both eyes see a different thing when we combine wherever we focus we see one off but wherever we don't look we see double right but our brain usually you know we shut that off right we don't we don't pay attention to that right we we kind of focus on the one thing but this is a great way to get your eyes you know from the distance when they're relaxed to the near point so when you're looking near your eyes have to cross when you look in the distance, they go parallel. You know, your lens gets thick when you look close. They, the lens relaxes when you look in the distance. So this is kind of a little bit of a nice, like a, like, oh, like biceps, you know, how you stretch your biceps and how you tight, you strengthen it. So it's kind of a nice little workout for your eyes. 
Yeah. This is the first time you gave an exercise where I actually felt something. Um, this is the first time where it actually, um, I can't say I was straining, but I do feel like I'm using something that probably hasn't been used in a long time. Like I could literally feel in my eye, something was being activated and was going, I'm a little uncomfortable. I'm not used to doing this. And, um, and it also strangely felt good at the same time to be using my eyes in a way where they felt really, really lazy. Uh, and I like, I like this one. Now this one, we're not moving our head, we're only moving our eyes, is that correct? Right, yeah, I mean, you don't want to be stiff, but you know, it's definitely moving your attention from one focal point to the next and noticing wherever you don't look, mm -hmm. like the finger or the tree, whatever the, you don't look, you always see double. And that's, if you don't see double, you have some challenges with depth perception. So this is something that a lot of people struggle with especially those that have mono vision, which is, you know, something where they correct one eye for near, one for far, yeah. because you want your eyes to work together all the time, really, ideally, right? So, um, yeah. Oh, those things they keep telling us are so good for us. Okay, and uh, before we <laughs> I mean, go This on... is definitely the most, sorry, this is the most exercise kind of, you know, as I said, there is some eye exercises that I use, definitely. You know, this is one of them. There's a, there's a whole lot, but it, the majority of the, the techniques I'm teaching are just techniques to instill good habits, like that central clarity, right? So there's a lot of movement activities that I'm teaching. They're really hard to demonstrate when you can't see it. So, um, but once you get that idea that only a small point is perfectly clear and you cannot see more than one point perfectly clear, you have to move your attention to the next point, right? Once you get that, you can kind of practice that all day long with whatever you're looking at, really. Yeah, that's great. Okay, and I, I'm going to ask you just to reiterate because I was typing out these words you used and you said it's very good. People do a lot of omega-6, but you recommend that they bump up the omega-3s. They're very important. And the two I recall you saying were chia seeds and walnuts. What was the rest of that? Chia, seed, chia seeds, flax, flax and hemp seeds have high omega-3. And if you eat uh, fish... Salmon also has high omega-3. So ideally, you want a one-to-one -one balance. Um, ideally, you want omega-3s and 6 in, in a one-to-one -one ratio. And I did a tracking for three days, and it wasn't easy. Like, it wasn't easy to kind of get that. And so, you know, for most people, it would be good to use a supplement maybe to take some additional omega-3s as a supplement. That's what I also do. I, I supplement with omega-3s as well. So that's a good uh, strategy. In terms of, do you want a nutrition tip also? Love it, of course, always. Okay, so when you buy, you know, when you buy those eye vitamins, I'm always a big proponent of getting things from whole foods or whole plants. So there's two nutrients that the macula, you know, remember the fovea inside the macula is where we have the sharpest vision, the color vision. You might have heard of macular degeneration. It's a disease that, you know, they call it age-related macular degeneration, but it's I hate that word because it's not really age-related, it's lifestyle-related. If you do too much crap, so to speak, over the decades, at some point, you know, that you have, there's consequences. Mm -hmm. But basically, um, so the macula has, is covered with um, two yellow plant pigments called lutein and CX xanthin. I can put that in the Zoom chat, so you can put it in the, um, let me put that in the Zoom chat. And you get those. Um, L-U-T-E-I-N, right? Yeah, that's lutein, and then CX xanthin is Z E A Z E A uh, X. Wait, and then X. I'm typing. I just typed it in the chat in the Zoom chat, so maybe okay. if you just want to copy and paste that. Kind of back and forth here. But basically, those are the two ingredients in most eye vitamins, and you can find those um, if you eat eggs and egg yolks, and then mostly, you know, what do we hear all the time: dark leafy greens, kale. Spinach, kale is the highest. Spinach, um, collard greens, any of those dark leafy greens have a high amount of those. Um, so that's why I eat them on every, basically at every meal I have some kind of greens, could be spring mix or romaine or even broccoli, you know. So getting those, those nutrients protect your macula. And if you don't eat enough of those things, then I also recommend supplementing to keep your 
area of sharpest vision and really perfect health. Mm -hmm. And those two plant pigments, by the way, if you're healthy macula and you eat those, we have to get those from food or from supplements. We can't produce them, you know, by ourselves. Um, th they absorb about 60% of the blue light and sunlight. But if your macula is depleted because you don't get these nutrients, right, then the blue light ha has a bad effect on your eyes, right? If you, if you don't, if you don't eat healthy, that's why <laughs> nutrition is so important too for eye health, especially as we get older, right? Yeah, so I, I know we have to wind this up. I wanted to ask you, you just reminded me of something I think is very important. Um, there's something that is fairly recent, at least in my world, that people now are getting glasses with a blue lens or blue blocking uh for their computers can you address that myth valid if it's valid what does it actually do and why okay great question and uh, it's actually a new company that i i just ordered some glasses from them they have way that block way more blue light than any other glasses and they're not yellow so most of those tints they put on glasses are not producing that much value mm -hmm. so the blue so there's two different things so computers have a huge amount of blue light. They emit a very high rate of blue light, some green and basically no red tones. So mm -hmm. what I recommend for everybody to do is either, I am, I'm on a Mac, so I don't know PCs that well, but on a Mac, I, there's something called night shift mode and mm -hmm. you can, and on your iPhone and your, all your Mac, uh, Apple devices, mm -hmm. and you can make the screen more yellow. So I have mine to the most yellow setting mm -hmm. because that counteracts some of that blue light from computers. There's also apps. There's an app that is really beautiful. It, it's not free though. It call, it's called Iris, like the iris in the eye. And then there's one called Flux, which is F-L-U-X. So those are two apps that have more settings than just night shift mode, right? And as a little tip for those listening, so night shift mode on the computer, it doesn't let you turn it on 24 seven, but I'm cheating the system on my iPhone too. I set it from 4 a.m to 3.59 a.m., right? So there's one minute in the middle of the night where the, so that way I have it on all day. Um, I prefer that over like, you know, I have some blue blocking glasses, but I don't like to have those things on my face. To be honest, I don't really like to wear those glasses. The sunlight has a full spectrum. So the sunlight, that's why I like sunlight because it gives you like the really healthy range of color spectrum, right? Versus the computers have this high rate of blue. That's why the blue blocking, I think, on computers is super important, especially if you spend a lot of time uh, every day on screens. And you mentioned that there is a, most companies just coat the glass and it doesn't make a difference, but that you found one you feel actually helps the eyes. Is it okay if you say who they are? Yeah, I, definitely. So um, I don't never know how to pronounce this. It's like, E Z, it's like E Z E and then K I L. It's like a it's like a name. I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. Like as in the bottom. Um, is it yeah? E -E Musical ion. Let me let me Google okay. the website. I haven't gotten mine yet. It's a startup. It's a brand new company. They they just uh, they're from Canada, um, but they 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 found me and contacted me. So I'm always interested in these products, and they also block EMF. So I'm. I'm really excited about this. So let me, let me give you the website. Um, yeah, here, yeah, I put it in the chat. So again, I haven't tested them yet, but I think that's a really promising product um, that you can, I'm, I'm gonna get mine very soon. So, yeah. Nice, you'll have to be the, uh, you'll have to have an affiliate so we can send business your way. That's yeah, awesome. they don't have that set up yet. Well, they better, <laughs> they don't know. girl. I know, and again, I'm not, I'm just saying like, I'm not, I haven't tested them myself, but they also, you know, relieving you, they're supposed to relieve your eye strain and, you know, giving you the EMF blocking in the, in the um, arms of the, the, you know, the glasses, you know, those sides, are they called arms or legs? I never know those little, the things that you have over the ears that hold your glasses over the ears. Arms, I see. What is that side? I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, so I, I want to, this is the thing, there's new stuff coming out all the time. But don't be afraid of the blue light and sunlight unless you have one of those um, eye diseases like macular degeneration or, you know, you have some kind of pupil uh, problems. But like we talked about, put a hat on, you know, you're not outside all day long, but usually put a hat on or a cap, 
um, and then it's okay if you have if you are healthy to be outside but for the computers definitely put that you know use an app or put that yellow tint on so that you protect your eyes from that extreme amount of blue light coming from screens this is awesome and i'm going to post here your giveaway gift which is naturallyclearvision.com slash masterclass 2020 where you're giving away all this even yeah. more information than so people that's it yeah i'm teaching i did one last night i'm teaching three more uh, it's a free class i'm teaching um on uh, like a webinar um, it's about an hour long and it's about the three biggest mistakes that people make that keep them chained to glasses and contacts and um, during that webinar at the end I'm also offering enrollment in my new course so naturally clear vision is a course and I'm teaching it's a brand new one I'm teaching it live I'm super super excited about this course so but I'm teaching it's about an hour of really great content you know and then anybody that is feels inclined to do something or take action it's, I can say it out here right now. It's like 497 and I'm, I'm giving so many bonuses. It's incredible to you. <laughs> this is the time. It's the time we're all showing up. I'm doing the same with all my book courses, serving at a level. Um, well, I've always served at a very high level, but let's say I'm bringing in or asking for a lot less than I ever had in the past, but it is a way for us all, I think, to be very compassionate with one another for what's going on. And people really, really see this time. Like, where are you going to be in six months? You could either say, wow, that was like a really intense time, man. <laughs> or you could say, yeah. what I created. I've got perfect eyesight. I wrote a chapter in a dog anthology. You know, I worked with Claudia because she's a healer. I work with Debbie because now she helped me write my book. I mean, this could be profound. And I think we are all those of us who are really showing up to serve right now are saying, come in, let me help you. I can help you. I can do it in a way that you can breathe through this financially and otherwise, and we will all be stepping into our greatness. So I think it's beautiful that you're doing that, giving away the one hour content, you know, driving people to your free gifts and system, and then also offering them, you know, this 497 course that is life changing. Like I said, me, that would be a pair of glasses. So what does that cost me going forward ROI, right? There's a lot of glasses. So it would be a lot more than 497. I think it's really, really worth it. And I don't know if that's a write-off to be honest with you because you're dealing with your eyesight, but I think it's worth looking into. You might be able to write off this course um, if it's for health reasons. So uh, there's that too. So we have to wrap it up, but I do wanna ask you here at the end, Claudia, anything else that you wanna share with people to give them the freedom they really desire right now and to let go of the darn glasses and contacts and actually have the freedom to see. Yeah, I, you know, my mission, and I say that in my webinar, is to really empower people to own their own eyesight, right? And not just rely on what doctors tell you because most people don't even know what the prescription means. They look at those numbers and so that's the first thing I teach is reading prescriptions, knowing what that means, getting reduced glasses like cheap on zenny.com for like 10 bucks, right? So really like not saying that the eye doctor doesn't give you valuable information, but especially optometrists, and I don't want to ditch them, but optometrists make money by selling glasses and contacts. So, you know, really question like, do I need to come in for an annual exam if my eyesight hasn't changed? Tuning in like, knowing like if learning how to measure your own eyesight on an eye chart is super easy really you literally you stick a chart on the wall and you read it right and knowing what 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 is my strength actually how much can i actually see Because it's just coming from the doctor you know they usually stress you out it's a dark room and you know you usually end up with glasses that are too strong and they feel too strong and then they say oh you get used to that getting used to that you make your vision worse so I'm not saying that they're bad people, but basically the system is, prob is problematic because there's no education. Most people think it's just normal to go downhill and it's not, it's really not normal. It's common, but it's not normal. That's very interesting. I have to say that I saw an eye doctor and I got the glasses that they had. First of all, I can't do the, the ones that go from one to the other. I was in pain, waste of a lot of money. And then um, I got another pair of glasses and I went back to the eye doctor and this is quote unquote air quotes, a great eye doctor. And I said, 
I am uncomfortable. Like these are actually too powerful. And he said, yeah, but that's where you're headed. And I thought, that is so strange. Why would I wear glasses for where I'm headed or you perceive I'm headed or hope I'm headed when in fact I'm right here right now. Like that's all that there is is right now. And I, you know, they have a lot of platitudes I've noticed because I've seen several eye doctors over time, like, oh, definitely ageism without a doubt. You're that age. Oh, it's great now. But, uh, you know, when you reach and fill in the blank, the number, it is going to get worse. They're so sure of themselves. And I actually think that puts black worms, if you will, meaning it puts something in your subconscious that actually helps lead you there. Oh, well, I'm getting worse. It's my age. They said I would. And the other thing is that's very interesting about what you shared, Claudia, is my eyesight is 2015. Still. And I'm still shocked when I, they, I go and I read the charts and they say it's 2015 and here's your glasses. So I am going to take that right there as my hope. There is the disconnect. And I'm going to start to use and incorporate this. I'm already signed up for your newsletters and in your Facebook group. And... Um, I am so grateful you came on and shared your wisdom today because I think this potentially could help a lot of people make a shift. And by the way, people, if you use her methods, please let us know. Let us know, like I stopped using my glasses or I went down from two point whatever to one or wherever you're headed, what's going well and you're getting wins, let us know if you become a really positive statistic and testimony. Sounds wonderful, Debbie. Yeah, and your body was immediately rejecting those progressive glasses, right, with the different diopters because they're not natural. And so most people get used to them and force themselves, and you were just like, no, this doesn't feel right. And your distance vision would have been gone downhill really fast when you start wearing them. So you, you, were, you did really well saying, I don't want those, they don't feel good. Well done. <laughs> Yay. I was channeling Claudia before I knew Claudia. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for all this divine wisdom and for what you're doing here for all of us and for leading the way by letting go of your glasses. 19 years ago is profound. And so let's just give it our websites one more time so people can find you, find me, and all that we're offering. So please go ahead. So you can download my free gift, 10 Habits for Healthy, Happy Eyes, when you go to myholisticvision.com. That adds you to my email list. And then the other thing that I'm currently running, when you, if you listen to this right now, naturallyclearvision.com forward slash masterclass 2020. That enrolls you into those. Uh, I teach three more. One is tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific. Three more of those masterclasses. And when you sign up for those, you get another gift, <laughs> 10 computer eye strain hacks. So there's a, there's a special handout which just tips for computer vision. So yeah, lots of good free stuff that you can get from me right now. Yay, that's beautiful. And uh, I am offering also free webinars, how to be interviewed. Um, excuse me, that's a whole nother class I offer, Ultimate Visibility. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. That's so hilarious. But we are being interviewed. So yeah, I'm actually speaking specifically about the author stuff. I am offering webinars how you can write your book and be published this year. I already did one and I sent out the replay. Um, I also had a lot of people sign up for that. So I know there's tremendous interest. If you want to just sign up for free so you know about these things coming down the pike and get a gift from me, go to debbie-shinger.com slash slash message, it will send you automatically a template so you can fill in the blanks and find out what your message is and how to articulate it out into the world so people know what you do and want to work with you. And then you will get on the list so that when I do another free webinar, and it is coming up pretty soon, about how to write a book, you will be a part of that. Uh, if you would like to write a chapter in the dog anthology, dog lover, canine, dog trainer, dog groomer, dog rescue, whatever your story is, the more varied the chapters, the more delicious. This is the ultimate book for dog lovers. You will register at debbyd.net slash anthology. It's spelled D-E-B-B-I, D.net slash anthology. And if you're ready to rock and roll and write your own book, obviously reach out to me for private sessions. And if you want to work on a group, 
private membership level, which is only 197, by the way, it's debbiedashinger.com slash visible visionaries. So I as well am making everything incredibly affordable and reasonable for people in a way I never have before. But let me help you to get your story and your message out into the world. Anyway, everybody, adore you. Thanks for joining us today for the show. And um, I wish I had a great quote to leave us with. Do you, Claudia, about eyes or health? Um, God, no, I can't, I don't think I can. Oh yeah, I have a great quote. Um, so Jacob Lieberman, who was an optometrist, um, you know, cured his own nearsightedness long time ago. So he said, over half the people in the United States wear corrective lenses, and almost all of them are capable of seeing much more clearly if they would only experiment with changing their ideas about vision. Mm. Thank you, my friend. You did a great job, and I love this.